we move on, are there any questions? Okay, would you say that the thing that happened the most often that got in your way was again that knee coming in, right? Like if I'm trying to leg drag and I get that initial circle, I get to here. Sometimes it's already oriented his hips this way, and I'm, like, I'm trying to get into here, but he keeps doing that. Yeah, would that be fair to say that that's like the main problem? Okay, so we're going to solve that problem by moving into the Torian. I mentioned yesterday this notion that like when somebody's providing you with 100% tension or resistance in one direction, very, very powerful, but impossible to now provide the same amount of tension or resistance in another direction. So the, the consequence of me redirecting this way and attempting a leg drag is that I'm trying to use my shin to push my partner's hips that way, which means all of their tension is going this way. Right? They're trying to rotate their hips back to keep their frames facing me, which means this plane is super strong, this plane is super weak. So as he turns, I'm just going to switch my grips from double angles. So I got to here, I redirect it. I noticed that like, he, he's already beaten. We talked about range battle yesterday. This is just another range battle. I want to catch him kind of here with my shin a little bit like in the pit of his knee, but a little bit over top. So now I'm trying to turn your hips that way. Pretty difficult, right? He can do it, but he'd have to bring his knees back towards there. We go. So now he's got it. Now he's got this strong plane, and I can no longer redirect him that way. So I stopped trying. I was here, and man, I lost that ring down. One, two. The illusion that's created here is that I'm going like this. I'm absolutely not doing that. Because even though he's weak in this plane, He's still stronger than I am. All right, so the, the act of like, so just like maintain tension, the act of trying to like tricep press down someone's leg shouldn't work. I'm not saying it'll never work, but it shouldn't. If it does, it means you're way bigger than them, or they just weren't creating proper isometric tension, right? Like, they're creating like active movement this way, but they're still creating enough isometric tension that, yeah, I shouldn't be able to push their leg out. However, what I will be able to do is block this knee while I circle around. And now, as my arm goes from bent to straight, it becomes a frame that's transmitting force into this lever through the push of my legs. So now my entire body is going to definitely overwhelm that leg. So it's important that we realize that every time I teach this, I get people like super frustrated and like, that is not at all how it's supposed to go. It should be a really easy movement. Anything, ah, I didn't say anything. It's obviously like escaping the mount should always be hard. Like even if you do it perfect, you know, like a perfect mount escape might work one out of every 10 times. That's a great mount escape. If your mount escape percentage on attempts is like 10 or even 20%, holy shit, you're amazing at escaping the mount. This is not one of those things. This is like if I time it right, it should feel easy. Any kind of like offensive movement where you time someone, and you redirect their force should feel as close to effortless as you know anything that's you know, purely physical activity can. Right? So I'm here, I go like this, he starts to turn, and I just drop my shoulder on this side of it. The other screw up we were talked about momentum and center of gravity yesterday. I have to keep control of mine and never give it to my partner. The way I can screw this up is if I get to here, I'm like, yeah! Oh crap, he's just gonna push me and roll me right over, all right? So my shoulder hits the near side. Center line, for those of you who don't know, is the line that bisects my partner's body, so it runs right down the middle. That's the center line. I do not want my weight to cross over that. I want to hit him on this side of the center line, either chest, jaw, neck, whatever, doesn't really matter for now. He'll probably be blocking the cross face to a certain degree, so I probably won't have to be able to hit him with that. But I've also got a lot of uh, you know, momentum going, so I'll, I might overwhelm his arms. And we kind of get into dealing with frames a little bit later on if we have time. But the idea is, I get to here, and I go like that. Right. To be nice about it, you can drop one knee down. And right. if you want to go, here, just put your knee down and rest your shoulders so you're not blasting something with all your weight. You can, but the, the correct way to do this 
is I'm here, he comes to face me, and I drop on him like this. Then I can see the cross face, or I can move around the north south, whatever. That's kind of up to you in your game. Everybody got this? Let me just go through the uh, sequence one more time. So his knees are really close. I circle, I redirect, he immediately comes to face me, I switch, and then drop into the target. Right. Anytime you're having problems with the leg drag execution, you move to the Toriano. Anytime you're having problems with the Toriano execution, you move back to the leg drag. So I don't know if we'll have a real time to get a lot of reps on that, but if I ever get myself here and he's really like reestablished his elbow connection, and I move back to here. And let's say he beats me and he gets back to face me, then I move back to there. Alright, so this is kind of like we went yesterday where we went one. Two, back and forth, back and forth until we got one one. This is the same thing. I go turning out the leg drag, leg drag, turning out back and forth. Eventually, I should beat you. That makes sense? Cool. All right, guys, let's get to it.